conversation continues now. The Democratic Alliance is yet to announce the mayoral committees for the Johannesburg, Tuana and Ekurileni metros. This says the deadline for the mayoral committees looms. Are the DA-led coalitions in the Gauteng metros in a crisis? He had to talk to me about this. We're joined now by political analyst Sandy Leswane as well as uh, Professor Sipo Siepe. Gentlemen, good evening. Good to have you with us tonight. I mean, that's the question, isn't it? Will they meet the deadline? Are they in a crisis or is this part of the game? That is one. Yeah, my view is that there's a bit of what you might call brinksmanship uh, and hard bargaining that is taking place. That is where I would put it at. And unfortunately, the DA and the participants in these coalition negotiations have not been too transparent with the content of where the actual snags are, uh, because it's about power, it's about skills uh, that need to go into these mayoral committee positions. Uh, how do you balance also the backlogs? Because these metros have got backlogs. So we need to be clear as to what exactly is the point where they are getting stuck. But I think right now they are pushing each other very hard uh, in terms of bargaining. Does the, of course, the, the challenge that smaller parties have, Prof, uh, of uh, always looking at the DA saying they want to play the, the big brother role in these uh, uh, coalitions and they don't necessarily like that. Uh, could this be a, a bottleneck in this process? Well, I think um, it needs to be clear that uh, parties, uh, small parties, cannot get uh, what they feel to get uh, in, uh, through the ballot. So they enter this uh, in, in as much as they don't want to see themselves as junior partners. They are junior partners. And I think many of them have actually acknowledged as much. And uh, the threat of collapse uh, has to be weighed against uh, the fact that uh, they are very clear in making sure that uh, they want to push the ANC out of government. So I think their commitment to keeping the ANC out is far greater than the threat uh, or the possibility of them considering collapsing. So I think the DA has been very clear in going on this to simply saying the, the results are there and we should be guided by that. And uh, if you take the posture of uh, uh, EFF, it has been very clear that they are not going to try to get uh, into positions. Uh, the voters did not give them that. So they are willing to stay out if need be for them to be able to play their role as a constructive opposition. So I think at the moment, as uh, my colleague is indicating, you have a brilliant that is uh, taking place. Of course, when you are at a negotiating table, you enter that, uh, of course, saving your position, but also with the possibility of compromise. I do think that the, the parties uh, would find common sense or the dislike of the ANC coming in is so great that uh, they would rather uh, find a common a, a commonalities that we can actually agree on the following. And um, the, as I say, the posture of the DA makes it even much, of the EFF makes it much more easier. They say, mm -hmm. we're not really obsessed about the position. We simply are looking at 2024, and our position is that uh, if the ANC is not in power, what it means that the, the visibility that it enjoys by being an incumbent is reduced and therefore they will not have a lot of air time. Yeah. So they will be able to compete quite fairly. The EFF does not see the DA as a, their opposition. Yeah. They see the ANC as the opposition. So that will make it much more easier for smaller parties. And of course, other smaller parties don't have so much of a real problem with, with, with the DA. Yeah. I mean, Action South Africa may complain about the arrogance yeah. that it sees, but it'd rather work with the DA than to work with yeah. another party. So uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was coming at, Prof, to say. I mean, the other smaller parties would seem to be a little bit more agreeable in terms of the deals that they've been given uh, to uh, mayoral uh, transport or, or uh, housing or whatever, in the case of the IFP and whatever else that the other parties have been given. But Action has said you've got a, a, a case of Mashaba who has a history with the Democratic Alliance, but also he's uh, 
uh, I hate for the ANC, maybe it's a strong word, uh, his opposition to the ANC uh, also coming into play here. Which one will be most important for him? Uh, a, a less than attractive offer from, from the DA and the option of having the ANC out of power? Well, I mean, he's been very clear on that. Uh, first, uh, the DA is also, uh, he, Mashaba put it out there that he's a, he's, he's a capitalist. And uh, the DA does uh, support uh, uh, capitalism, even though it may say it's a capitalism of a different kind, where it also acknowledges that uh, in South Africa, um, there must be an acknowledgement, although it doesn't do as much as it, it, it speaks about it that uh, there is a history in this country. So you cannot simply say everybody must do as they can without understanding that uh, there is a history that needs to be addressed. And they, they had so far failed to manage uh, that process. This is why some of the uh, uh, people have been concerned about uh, its commitment to black advancement. But uh, right now, uh, the fact that it has fielded a number of black candidates it means that some black candidates still believe that there might be a, a, a misunderstanding or that they might be able to push the DA to acknowledge that this is a reality that they cannot ignore. But so far, its a past behavior has been problematic. But it could also be because it was trying to create, as uh, Helen Zeta would say, that uh, he, she participated in advancing people who were not yet ready. So the question is whether the current uh, leaders are ready the, are they ready or are they also part of the experiment? But uh, I do think that uh, outside brinkmanship, common sense will dictate. But uh, as I said earlier, that the, the position of Mashaba is that he'd rather deal and work with the DA despite its uh, weaknesses. But uh, when it comes to the ANC, it's very clear that uh, I'd rather push the ANC outside and work with other people. They seem to be up in arms at this one, particularly around the composition and selection of committee chairs. Why is that so important? The, the issue of, you must remember that uh, a lot of these parties, including the DA, want to use their victories uh, in capturing these metros as a marketing platform for 2024. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you want to be the chairman or chairperson of a portfolio committee that is going to be prominent and high performance. That is where the issue is. You don't want to choose a portfolio that is hidden somewhere that uh, is not touching something. But uh, so that is where the bargaining is going to. That's where the bargaining is really, because they've considered the mayorships. They've considered that it must be an executive mayorship. So uh, the only thing that is left now are the chairpersonship of these committees. So if, for instance, you, you are in a municipality where water has been a big problem or water is prominent and there are realistic prospects of, of turning it around, that's what you want to get. Those are the types of things that, that are, they are haggling about right now. You've got a mayor and a mayor doesn't, that doesn't have a, a, a mayoral committee. What is the worst that could happen? I, you must, I think that, uh, well, there are other legal issues that could kick in now once you, you start failing to constitute the municipality properly. Uh, you know, the, the council itself could dissolve itself if it is not able to compose itself properly. Uh, the province could intervene and dissolve the council. But I, I think we're still further down the road uh, from that. I, I think right now the issue is still about bargaining. I, I am not, I, I don't think we're getting off the table. Also, the issue that has been raised here by Professor Siepe that uh, I think it is relatively settled that the, the practices and philosophies that have been exercised by the ANC in the metros up to this point are no longer needed there together with the ANC itself. So the other option of saying, let's just form a proportional council where it becomes an executive council rather than an executive mayorship, uh, I don't think they are going to go down that road because that, that road will bring in the ANC back into play. So the only viable option in front of them right now is to actually agree and constitute this, this um, mayoral executive committee.
Let's take a break. We'll continue in a moment. Political analyst Sandy Lasan, as well as Professor Sipo Siepe with us tonight here on In Focus. Are the delayed collisions in the Gauteng Metro in a crisis? Get more answers to this when we come back. Back tonight on In Focus, News from Africa, Channel 405. Political analyst Sandy Lesuan and Professor Sipo Siepe with us uh, tonight. Of course, looking at the question of collisions in the Gauteng metros of Tswane, Gruleni, as well as uh, Johannesburg. We saw in Johannesburg, Professor Sipo Siepe, uh, the collapse there of uh, the council meeting. Collapse by action, they say, who are saying, well, we can't constitute the, the oversight committees before actually having mayoral committees in place. Doesn't make sense. What will they be uh, looking over? What oversight will they be exercising if there is no mayoral uh, committee in place? How crucial is that role of oversight uh, by these committees in the municipalities? Well, oversight is um, part of our core business in democracy. It's really about accountability. And it's also that when people are placed in positions and they make certain declarations and plans and all that, and the promises that they made, your oversight becomes uh, very important in looking at whether the parties are actually doing their work. And also there is a way in which uh, there can be enforcement. It's, also, it's uh, not different from what we see in parliament where opposition parties uh, um, force the executive to account. So without oversight, you cannot talk about the uh, the, the notion of uh, what you call monitoring. It's about monitoring. It's about also ensuring that there's implementation. So it is very crucial that uh, you, in any democracy, you have an element that, has, that deals with accountability. And in a sense, the very same election itself are also a form of accountability, where parties are forced to account back to the committee and the people, then simply say, this is how you are actually performing. So without the, uh, the notion of oversight, the performance of a municipality would not uh, be uh, made uh, much more clear and open and transparent. So oversight is very critical in any functioning democracy. Yeah, it's still early days in, in these governments, but um, already establishing somewhat of a critical tone and manner in which how these parties are going to to function going forward. Is there something we can learn out of this in as far as the, the Democratic Alliance being able to exercise I its authority? Well, I mean, look, um, this is not the first time that Democratic Alliance has been in a position of power as government. And, um, and uh, as you understand, in a democracy, it's a space of contestation. The fact that, that it continues to be in the way it is governed, continue to be voted in, suggest that they, at least from the perspective of uh, voters, uh, there's uh, at least a sense of uh, that they are comfortable with it. But uh, we've also, also seen them being able to, when Mashaba was in charge of uh, Johannesburg, he, even though he ended up fighting with his own party, but he actually showed a model of possibility that there are certain minimum agreements that are actually possible, especially when you deal with municipalities when it comes to issues of the, uh, service delivery. And Mashaba was very clear that the uh, S far as was concerned, the issue of social, social justice must be number one. And the DA's argument has always been where we govern, we, we, we do it better. So the notion of a provenance, proving that you can deliver, has been uh, one of the, the selling point or the value proposition. So I do think that uh, no party can disagree on that. Where there might be disagreement is really around the issue of allocation of budgets. That where do you place the issue of budget? And uh, here, some people may say, if you are a party that is pro-rich, you will actually allocate your budget uh, to favor the rich. But if you are a pro-poor party, your position would be to say, let us pay attention to this. And of course, this debate is not an easy one because some people will argue that uh, paying attention to also the rich, it's also about supporting business so that the, the, the economy grows so that you can have also uh, employment. So those are some of the issues that uh, uh, would be part of a discussion in how do you allocate the, the issue of budget. So I do think that uh, there is a experience that they can actually learn from. But one of which is absence of arrogance is uh, something that is actually required. The collapse of the DA's uh, leadership in, uh, or, uh, in Nelson Mandela, when you listen to other parties like uh, UDM, was that they felt that the DA was uh, being more arrogant. 
uh, and it is different being leading because you have numbers, but also being arrogant where you're dismissive of other perspectives, then you, you are going to collapse that, that cancer. And uh, Dansani, I mean, uh, still on that same question, the DA is set on adhering to its key principles uh, in exercising its, its leadership in these uh, metros. And then you've got a, a, an action essay that says, well, we'll not be forced into signing any coalition agreements on, 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 on deadline. I mean, that tone and manner in which they are dealing with each other, does it set for us a, a pace of, of what we could expect in this coalition going forward? Yes. Uh what is, what is happening now is that the so-called bigger parties, and obviously it depends where you are, which province you are discussing, but in this case, uh, we're talking ANC, DA, uh, IFP. I'm talking about parties that have actually governed and run municipalities before. The period that they've entered in tells us now that you can no longer be the only voice uh, that says my principles are, are, are the following, therefore uh, these principles are non-negotiable because I'm sorry and so. Uh, the DA does not have irrefutable principles and they are going to experience that when other people who come from perhaps different backgrounds such as Mashaba and others uh, start also explaining and putting forward what may actually be cogent arguments. So there's going to be a lot of deliberation and very, very tough debates and arguments. Uh, the DA is not going to be on auto cruise. I don't think so, not at all, in, in, in this next five years. And, and uh, in, 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 in your view, will this relationship hold? I mean, with the cracks already beginning to show now, will it hold for the full term? I don't think these are cracks. Uh, you know, we are very unfortunate as South Africans, if, if I were to put it this way. From 1948, we had one dominant party until 1994, which was the National Party. So it was basically a sort of a dictatorship uh, where the National Party, what it says it went. Followed, following that, we've had the voice of the ANC in everything since 1990. Uh, this idea of a dominant voice that you have to listen to this voice, whether you like it or not, is there in our history. But that is not democracy. Democracy is noisy. Democracy is chaotic. Democracy is messy. But democracy is exactly what we need. So that is what all of us have got. We must not say they are cracks because people are not uh, buying your argument. And then you say they are cracks. They, what cracks? So we need to be able to understand that intellectually, everybody needs to be much more robust than they've ever been before. Yeah, this characterization there, uh, uh, Dr. Swan is saying, these are not cracks, Prof. Uh, this is democracy at play. Yeah, no, it's actually correct. Um, I mean, uh, Wallace Sainka put it very nicely to say the greatest threat to democracy is absence of criticism. And uh, we need to understand that democracy is an experiment. And maybe right now we're going through that experiment. And that experiment means that we need to appreciate that people come from different backgrounds, different experiences, and those inform how they see things. And uh, the parties that want to see democracy work, they, would be, they can be persuaded by a force of logic. Uh, and the, the notion of stubbornness is not going to take, it anywhere, uh, take you anywhere. And fortunately, we now have a uh, what appears to be a discerning voter who is not saying, who's not saying I'm going to be guided by my historical position. They are going to say, I'm going to be guided by how much you have actually performed. People would not have thought that today the party of liberation would be the one that is now on the margins and uh, watching the game that it should have been playing. But part of it is that uh, it had actually failed. So this party is enter that with that understanding that the, the voter is actually discerning, but also the, the voter is very noisy. We have had uh, more protests in the last few years than ever before, and those protests are form also of activism, where people are saying, we want this, and I think uh, you now have parties that uh, have been more on the margins representing those voices that are not ahead. So I do think that uh, this robust engagement should be welcomed. It should not be seen as cracks. 
it should be actually the beginning. And if we start now, it is possible that uh, you will start having what you call the terms of engagement, the rules of engagement, and also the deadlock uh, breaking mechanisms. So let's see it as an experiment that would be perfected. And you must also understand that in, even in mature democracies, this happens. So there's nothing unusual about us uh, being at loggerheads, especially given our history. And it becomes very important that uh, we start talking to each other. And I think this coalition have also made parties that will not tend to each other to start talking to each other. So there is a possibility of dialogical engagement as opposed to oppositional engagement. So we are now beginning to find a possibility where we find each other and we can hear each other. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much uh, for coming through, gentlemen, and uh, giving us uh, your